If you want to achieve financial freedom like wealthy people, here's what you need to know. About 70% of the American economy is built on people spending money. However, the challenge lies in the fact that many of them are buying things they can't afford, just to impress others they actually don't like. They max out their credit cards, paying hefty interest on something they didn't care much about in the first place. This isn't a smart use of debt, and it won't make you wealthy. But you have to understand, debt, when used wisely, can actually be a powerful tool for building wealth. It's not inherently risky. It's how people use it that can be tricky. Welcome back to Finance Homefront with me, Bev. And today we're tackling how to use debt to your advantage and build wealth. Sure, using debt can seem risky, but it's the people using it who can make it risky. Messing up with debt can block your path to wealth, especially if you're not careful while you're still young. While the magic of compound interest is a thing, it takes time. And by the time it pays off, a significant part of your life may have already passed. On the flip side, using debt wisely allows you to compound assets much faster. You can compress the traditional 40-year plan that your parents and grandparents followed into just four or five years, making your journey to wealth more efficient. I'll show you how you can do it too. When you use debt smartly, it means taking a small part of what you have to get a much larger part of what someone else has. It's not just about making more money, although it does help with that. The real purpose and benefits run much deeper. Using debt lets you control an asset without fully owning it. This means you get all the benefits of the asset, like revenue, appreciation, depreciation, and use without having to own it outright. Long-term debt also puts you on the right spot of the economy when it comes to transferring ownership from the lender to the borrower through a process called amortization. And when done correctly, it's the asset itself that works to pay down the debt for you. Now consider this. The high inflation we're experiencing for 40 years is actually working in your favor. The increased money you'll earn in the future because of inflation will make the debt you take on today easier to manage. Your income is going to grow, but your debt payments won't increase as much. This strategy isn't just for individuals. Big companies like Apple and Microsoft and many others use debt to grow their fortunes because they understand this concept. Rich people get it, and if you want to be wealthy, you should understand it too. Here's the idea. Our currency is a depreciating asset due to inflation. So what the wealthy do is borrow this depreciating asset to buy assets that actually appreciate, especially assets they can control. Here are things you can use debt for, and they're all about gaining control. First, invest in yourself. That means self-education, training, mentors, or joining associations to get better at dealing with the kind of stuff you want to use debt for. Improve yourself. Build a stronger network. Because the more you can control yourself, the better. Second, put money in your business. Anything that boosts your business's revenue, value, and especially profit. It's easier to control and manage your own business than someone else's. Lastly, think about real estate. This is the final frontier opportunity for regular people to create some serious wealth. Why? Because you can use debt in real estate in a way you can't in other investments. Now, I'll explain this using real estate, but you can apply these ideas to other things too. Don't stress about the numbers. Focus on the concept. Got it? Great. Now, let's say there's a house worth $100,000 and you manage to snag it from a motivated seller for $80,000. You put down 20%, which is $16,000, and borrow the rest from a bank, $64,000. Let's say it's a typical 30-year loan with a 5% interest rate, giving you a monthly payment of $344. So with just $16,000 of your own money, you're in control. You get all the benefits, 
the revenue the property brings, an increase in its value, tax advantages like depreciation and deductions, and the gradual paying down of your debt. Plus, real estate is a good hedge against inflation. You're using a small part of your own money to control a big part of someone else's through debt. It's like magic, but not really. It's just smart money moves. If you're finding this helpful, hit the like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to stay in the loop. All set? Let's keep going. Now, let's find a tenant willing to pay $1,200 to live in the property. Each month, we'll use that rent to cover our mortgage payment of $344, essentially paying down the debt, thanks to amortization. Up to this point, we've cleverly used debt to generate income. The money we make goes towards paying off the debt, and we get to enjoy the tax benefits that real estate offers, including deductions for borrowing costs, management expenses, depreciation, and other business-related expenses. These tax advantages can add up quickly, sometimes allowing you to show a loss on paper while actually making a profit. Now let's sit on this property for about three years. The average housing appreciation since 1968, according to the National Association of Realtors, is about 5.4%. To be conservative, let's keep it at 3% causing the property's value to increase by $110,000 after three years. Add in the three years of debt paydown, giving us a principal reduction of $3,000. When we combine the initial equity, appreciation, and principal paydown, we now have a new equity position of $49,000. Through the smart use of debt, we're turning $16,000 into $49,000 a whopping 300% return in just three years. Pretty impressive, right? Now you can leverage that $49,000 of equity to acquire more debt and repeat the process. In another three years, you could own a total of 13 properties, turning $16,000 into a small million-dollar real estate empire with approximately $500,000 in equity. These are the kind of returns that make your financial planner a bit jealous. And I haven't even factored in the positive cash flow from the rent yet. I can sense your mind racing. Maybe thinking of different situations where this might not work. But instead, try focusing on the numerous scenarios where it has worked for many people in building wealth. This approach has been more successful for creating wealth than almost anything else. If you've got a better plan or an alternative strategy, Feel free to share it in the comments. I'm all ears. If you're happy with your current approach, that's great. Stick with it. But this method is how wealthy individuals use debt to grow their fortunes. They grasp the concept that more debt can lead to more earnings. And more earnings mean more opportunities to get additional debt. It might seem slow at first, but it can quickly snowball. Now that we understand what good debt is, why it's beneficial for building wealth, where to use it first, how it operates, the final piece is when to use it. Well, as long as you're borrowing money to get something that makes money, like turning a depreciating asset into an income-producing, appreciating one, there aren't many situations where you shouldn't consider it. In the end, debt helps speed up the process. The more you use it, the quicker your wealth and financial independence can grow. Just a reminder that the information provided in this video is not financial, legal, or tax advice. This content is created for entertainment purposes only, and any financial decisions should be made after consulting with a qualified professional. Now, if you're enjoying the content and want to stay updated with our latest insights, please hit the like button, subscribe to Finance Homefront, and ring the notification bell. This way, you'll be the first to know whenever we release new content.